In this segment, we will see how to use the nngraph package to build a recurrent neural network in Torch. We will start by comparing the technique to create a multilayer perception with the nn package and the nngraph package. So we will introduce the parentheses and the dash notation alternatives. Moreover, we will show how to use the graph dot visualization with the graph vids application. We will write a get node function additional to what comes with the G module in order to display the content of a specific node. Then we will see more fun architectures that can be easily done with the NN graph package. And we will implement our very own vanilla recurrent neural network in just three or four lines of code. Finally, we will use a script we have developed here at the eLab at Purdue, which can create a recurrent neural network model and its time index replica with some annotation that is the understanding of its own architecture. Let's see where we can find the nngraph package and how to install the graph feeds program. We are going to have some fun with the nngraph package of Torch, which is a graph package to craft neural networks. You may need to install the graph feeds utility on Mac or Ubuntu if you would like to visualize also the graphs we are going to make. Let's start our interpreter and require nn graph. We are also going to require pretty nn. Moreover, we are going to set the torch manual seed to zero so that the results that I make can be reproducible by you. Let's create a simple neural network. So we are going to have a sequential. Then I'm going to add a linear that goes, for example, from 20 to 10. Then we can add a nonlinearity. Then we can add one more linear uh, in this case let's say from 10 to 10 and then we can add one more nonlinearity finally we can add our last layer so in order to write a network which has uh, three layers I had to write six lines of code. Uh, we can print here our network. Let's see how we can do the same by using the nngraph module instead. Our first module is going to be an handle on the first module of our network that we had generated here. And we add an extra parenthesis here. So what is h1? h1 now is an nngraph node. If you would like to look inside h1, we can use the curly bracket operator. And then we can see the content of our h1. We can recognize that inside data and module, we will see the first module of our previous network. Let's actually check if it's the same module. So we can do, for example, uh, from the previous net, we can get the first module dot bias let's view it in a, in one line so it's easier to view and let's do the same for the other one so h1 we go inside data module then we go to the bias and we view it the same way and here we can see the values match so let's finish to write this network so we had that h1 was simply the first module of our network we had generated before and then let's call h2 the rest of the module so we are going to apply net module 2 on h1 then we are going to apply 
net module 3 on this combination. Then we are going to apply net modules 4 to this combination. And then finally, we are going to apply net modules 5 on this. And here we have H2. It's the second node of the graph, which has been built from H1, to which we have applied the module 2 function, the module 3 function, the module 4 function, and the module 5 function. So in two lines of code, I have my network now. Let's create the graph net, which is going to be a G module, to which I pass my H1 as the input, and the H2 as the output. So if you'd like to visualize this, we can do graph dot dot <laughs> G net. Uh, then we specify forward graph. And we can call this MLP. Let's open it. Open MLP.svg. And here we have it. So we have our first input, which is mapped to a linear. Then we have a tan H, another linear, a tan H, a last linear, and then there is the output of our model. Okay, so let's try to forward now uh, in, an input to both networks. So we can write x equal torch dot ran and 20 because our first linear was from 20 to 10. And then we can see net, which is our uh, sequential network. We can do net forward x and we get 0.1856 and then we can try gnet forward x and we have the same exact result. Let's say we would like to check the content of the node number 4. So I like to usually write this uh, handy function. So I usually write a function, perhaps you can do it in another way but I'm not aware at the moment. So let's add one more function, get node, uh, specify my ID. So I have for whatever and node in I pairs self for word nodes, please do if n dot id it's equal my id then return n data module and and for of the four and then we do return nil if you didn't find anything and then we can end so now if i get my gnet and i ask get node number four that is the one we were looking for i get my linear and if you would like to check inside of as usually as usual we can use the curly brackets so can we make it more easy yes we can so let's see how to do so let's forget actually we had uh, this network here let's make a new network from scratch but with the same architecture but without sharing uh, specifically the same modules so i'm gonna write my first handle uh, I'm going to call it G1, and I can write it this way. Uh, it's a linear that goes from, it's the first linear, so 20 to 10. And then I write my second module, my second handle, which is going to be G1, attached to NN, attached to NN dot linear that goes from 10 to 10 and then attach to tan h again and then finally our last linear which goes from 10 to 1 
and then I can put those two guys together and we have our MLP equal nn dot g module of my first g1 which is the first handle and then the g2 which is the second handle let's visualize this guy for fun so let's go on graph dot uh, we have mlp forward graph and we call it mlp2 and ml and mlp2 and then we can do we can open we can open it uh, mlp2.sv and here it is so our second module is basically the same as the first one and it's the way to write this down it's much more compact respect to the classical sequential uh, is this the only advantage no actually the fun just starts now we can make so interesting architecture by using the nn graph package for example let's play with this let's call it input it's gonna be uh, my first handle identity so then we have our first block i'm gonna call it input to which attach to which i attach a linear uh, 10 to 20 and then a non-linearity my L2 instead is going to be the input here above attached to the output of L1 together with joint and then we say make a linear so since my input was 10 and the output of the first one is 20 we will be going from 30 and let's say to we go to 60 and then we apply a non-linear function then we have our third block it's let's say the concatenation of the first block and the second block so we do again a join table on the first dimension here we can make a linear so let's see l1 was 20 and l2 is 60 so 20 plus 60 is going to be uh, from 80 here and let's go on to a scalar and then we apply a non-linear function and let's make our g module so the first one is going to be my input and then the output just the l3 let's see how this looks like so we can go graph dot g dot forward graph let's call it fancy fancy and open the fancy dot svg and here we have it so let's see we start here with the uh, initial node then we have an identity which is sent to two parts because we see here that the input was used in uh, was used by l1 and also by l2 so on the left hand side we have l1 and on the the node 10 we have l2 then l2 is processing and then we have node 4 which is going to be encoding our l3 which gets the input from the output of l1 and l2 and in fact here we get the last tan h now node 5 from l1 and the output of the l2 which is again another tan h which is going to be sent to the node 4 which is joining the tables and performing the last linear now that we have sharpened our weapons we can start tackling the rnn so let's say we have the dimensionality of the input it's equal 3 then we have the output dimensionality it's equal 1 the dimensionality of the hidden layers uh, it's 5 and then the number of hidden layers uh, let's say we have two hidden layers in this case and then we have the length of the longest sequence we would like to tackle uh, let's say it's 4 we are going to make now our model R N N 
uh, we had to define some specific inputs and some specific outputs. So to this model, I will have three inputs. The first one is going to be called xx. I'm going to explain soon what it, what it is. The second one is going to be called h h number one. And then the third one is going to be h h number two. xx is a terminal for my input sequence. So this one is going to be going here. Then the HH1, it's simply the H of the first layer at time T minus one. And this one is fed here. And the last one is going to be the previous H for the layer number two at the time T minus one. And this one is going to be fed here. On the right hand side, we are going to be producing the first hidden representation, which is going to be called simply H1. We output also the second representation in order to be able to use it for the following steps in the sequence. And then we provide the YY output. And this one correspond to my H first layer of time t. The second one instead is going to be a gate for my H second layer, again time interval t. And then the last one, I will have my prediction sequence. So let's make now this central block with all these terminals. We are going to have three input and three output. xx x equal and then identity hh1 equal dash and then dot identity and then hh2 equal dash and an identity. Then we have the h1 is going to be xx and hh1, the previous state, to which I do a join table on the first dimensionality. Then I have a linear layer going from n plus t to d. And then we have a tan h nonlinearity. Then here we have our h1 concatenated to hh2. Then we have the same join table one and then dot linear, which goes from two times d d nonlinearity. And then the output is going to be h2 connected to linear d to k and then we have an done h so our rnn is going to be equal to nn dot g module of xx hh1 hh2 and as output we send h1 h2 and yy sweet let's try to forward a node here so we're going to have my x is going to be torch rand of n and then we are going to have that h0 the initial state we said it's going to be a uh, zeros of the dimension so if i do rnn forward and then i send my x a zero state and a zero state because it's for example the first term first element of my sequence we are going to have the output which is going to be current h1 h2 and then the y output let's visualize this network so we can do dot rnn dot forward graph and then we have rnn and rnn 
and we can open rnn.svg and we have a rnn written in four lines of code so let's see what's happening here so at the beginning we have our input that is going to be the three tensors the three dimensional uh, input x and the two previous states tensor 5 tensor 5 the node 10 we have the uh, identity connected to the x node 11 we have the identity connected to the uh, previous state for the h1 and node 12 we are going to have the identity which is connected to the previous state of the second hidden layer then we compute uh, a concatenation of the input and the previous state in the node 8 and then we perform the linear uh, mapping to which we apply then the tan h nonlinearity then the output it's first send down for the next iteration and also it's sent to the next block which is going to be having an input which is tensor phi tensor phi because both of them are uh, the dimensionality of d we join the table so we are going to have 10 which shoots to 5 and then below we have a tan h and then the h2 is sent again out for the next state for the next iteration finally we have the last linear and nonlinearity and also that is going to be sent out in fact as we saw here when we send forward our x and two null uh, states we are going to have three output which is going to be the first uh, hidden layer the second hidden uh, layer and then the final output uh, perhaps was a bit confusing so let's make it uh, easier by using a script we have developed in our lab rnn equal require rnn you can get this file if you go on the elab github account find the torch 7 demos and then on the rnn train sample you can find the rnn.lua script i'm using right now so we can say time net and net equal rnn dot get model and we send the dimensionality of the input and the dimensionality of the hidden states d the number of hidden layers which is going to be two in this case the k dimensionality of the output and the maximum length of the sequence done finish so one line and we have everything we written before in the previous screen plus also the cloning and with parameter sharing across time steps in order to perform a training which we will go across in the next lesson so let's see what we have generated here so we go graph dot dot net dot forward graph and we have net net we can open net dot svg so we have the input the node number 10 and it's sent together with the node 11 previous state for the uh, first hidden value it's sent to number node number 8 where we have them joined together then they go through a linear mapping and then we apply the nonlinearity tan h we can see the linear goes from 8 to 5 because the lowercase n was set to 3 whereas d was set to 5 so 5 plus 3 uh, equal 8 so we go from 8 to 5 then below we are going to have the, the previous state for the second hidden layer it's sent down to the joint table which, which is joined together with the state of the first hidden layer we have a concatenation a linear which goes from 10 to 5 because we have 2 times t then we apply the nonlinear function and then we have last linear mapping followed by the last nonlinearity let's go back here and let's see instead what is time net this time so let's go and type graph dot dot time net forward graph and we call it time net and time net then we can open it
and here we have the monster. Let's try to understand what's going on. Let's scroll up. Okay, we, we see that in blue we have RNN module 1, RNN module 2, RNN module 3, and RNN module 4. We have replicated our same ver the very same model four times in order to catch events that are at most four apart. Then the first RNN module is sent with the input number one, the second one with the input number two, the third one with the input number three, and the fourth with the last fourth input. Moreover, the previous states of layer one, node 13 and 14, are sent into the RNN model number, number one. Then the state from the model number one is sent forward to the model number two, which state is sent forward to number three, and in which state it's sent forward to model number four. At the end, we have the last two uh, states which are sent out to the network. Moreover, to the output of the network, we had the prediction from the RNN model one, the prediction from the model RNN model two, the prediction from the RNN model number three, and the final prediction from the model RNN model four. In this way, we can easily train our system by providing the initial state and the sequence of input and then we are going to get in output a sequence of prediction and the final state of the system. Then we will simply compute the loss function with respect to the prediction and the, and the labels and then we propagate the, the gradient of the loss function with respect to each and every prediction back into the networks and this is handled automatically by the NN graph package. In the next video, we will go through the complete training script to have a working example on how such a system can be easily trained.